As some of you know, I started building my construction software around two months ago. And after two months of staring at my screen, 12 hours a day, waking up in the middle of the night, having nightmares about API request timeouts, I'm finally in a position where I'm ready to launch. If I started again with what I know now, the same task probably would have taken me five days. So I wanted to make this video to give a bit of an update, what I've been working on, where I'm up to, and some of the lessons I've learned along the way. I quit my job back in May to go all in on Construct IQ. I'd had lots and lots of students enrolling in Udemy in my construction management courses, but Udemy takes a horrendous commission on any purchase. And I was starting to see more and more success on YouTube with my tutorials. But the obvious problem I had is while I'd found out a way to build an audience, I didn't have a product to sell. So before I wanted to double down on making more videos and building my audience, I needed to come up with something I could sell, some sort of business model that aligned with YouTube and building an audience. So I thought long and hard about a couple of different models I could pursue. The first, which was the original path I went down, was just selling more and more courses. But this path had a few issues for me. I like making videos and I like making courses, but the way people seem to make a lot of money in this online education space are these high ticket or very expensive thousand dollar plus masterminds teaching some sort of specialist skill or some sort of skill that translates directly into making money. And the whole business model seems to be completely marketing and sales dominated. So it's all about just marketing more and more and more, having sales teams and trying to sell products or high ticket masterminds like that. And it just didn't really feel like a super valuable product or not the best use of my time to try and build something in this space. And I eventually realized deep down, I just didn't want to be an education entrepreneur. I wanted to be a construction entrepreneur. So the next model I looked at seriously was consulting. And I was doing consulting for a couple of months and making pretty decent money. The problem with consulting is how scalable it is. I capped out at 50 hours billable per week very fast. So it didn't make any sense to do more marketing unless I found a way to scale it beyond me just working more and more hours. I really see two ways of scaling a consulting business in construction like this. You either have to take on more risk, so do profit share with contractors and take on the actual success of the project and get a share of the piece of the pie, or you have to employ other people to do the work for you, which is hard unless you have some super niche skill we can bill out at a very high rate for. I don't really see either of these options, partnering with contractors or starting to employ people full time as a viable way to grow because I just didn't want the stress of doing something like that at this time in my point of my career. The other thing I found with consulting is all my clients came from my own personal network. None of them came through my YouTube channel. I tried advertising, I tried publicizing consulting, but it just didn't really seem to be any interest from my audience in these sorts of services. So basically, I just couldn't see an easy way to align the content marketing I was doing with some sort of consulting service. Exploring these options made me realize a couple of things. First one is that I wanted the business to be around free education as a way of generating leads. I wanted to build a standalone product or service that was incredibly valuable and that was so good it would market itself. I don't want to have to deal with the stress and chaos at this point in my life with contracting and I wanted to focus on something where by building the product I was going to learn a lot. The final thing I should point out is I wanted to pursue a business model where it was already proven. It was something that people already paid for and used. I'm not interested in some sort of crazy startup idea that has a 1% success rate, but if it succeeds, would completely change the industry. No, my view is that you're much better off copying something that you already know people pay for and it works and making it better incrementally. And so basically the only model that ticked all those boxes and was the perfect fit for what I wanted to do was software. So. Once I decided I wanted to pursue software and it best aligned with what I wanted to do, the next thing, well, the next question I had to answer is what software do I want to build? And very importantly, I want to point out that while I'm going to explain my thought process for what, how I decided what to build, I haven't actually sold any yet. So this whole rationale, this whole reasoning behind this is, could be very likely completely wrong. So the first thing I had to decide on is what domain of construction management I wanted to focus on. And for me, this was super easy. It had to be estimating and contract management. It's where I've had the most experience, but it's also where my videos and my courses have had by far the most success. So within this domain of estimating and contract management, I had to settle on what specific problem did I want my software to solve. Having done a lot of estimating and contract management, I've got a really good feel 
for what the problems people in this space face. First one, it's not necessarily a problem, but 90% of all estimating and contract management is done using Microsoft Excel. And that's because Microsoft Excel is an amazing tool. There are some fundamental problems with using Excel for estimating. First one is version control. So having multiple people working on and collaborating on Excel estimates, everyone's got different versions saved on their desktops and then trying to merge these together or worked out what revision of the pricing matched with what. The second one is as your estimates get bigger and more complex, you end up with these complicated spreadsheets with VLOOKUPs everywhere and it just becomes a bit buggy and more and more likely to have errors. The second one, which is really the major problem I see with how most estimators approach estimates estimating is that people tend to ignore the contract, the scope of works, the documentation when they're preparing an estimate. Estimators tend to want to look at the drawings, build the job in their head, and then capture this in a price. They don't like to look at the scope of works, contract, tender documents to base what their pricing is on. And often they're not necessarily thinking about it from a commercial lens, but price and terms are directly related. So I wanted to try and work on the problem of how do you integrate the contract management side with the estimating side, because I think overall the industry does a relatively poor job of it. And the final problem, which is prolific in the industry, is that estimating and quoting accurately is incredibly hard. We have complicated projects with nuanced scopes, with lots of uncertainty and unknown coming up with an accurate price that you're willing to sign a contract to say you can deliver the project for is a challenging exercise. So those are the three problems I wanted to solve. I wanted to make something that improved on, it didn't replace Excel, but improved on the way Excel is the best tool for estimating, integrated price and terms. Finally, just made the process of estimating easier to help try and avoid errors. Also, I'm completely aware that there are already existing softwares and solutions to some of these problems, but for me, that is a good sign because it shows there's already products out there that people are willing to spend money on. Next, moving from the problem to the solution. So anyone who's familiar with software development knows the first step in launching a software isn't building some big complicated software that takes you a year to build. It's building something narrowly defined that solves a specific problem referred to as a minimum viable product. You wanna build some sort of simple draft that you can launch quickly and get user feedback, or at least that's what I'd read you should do online. So first I had to start with the narrowest, simplest problem I could solve that would be valuable and people would be willing to pay for. So I tossed around a lot of different ideas when I was coming up with what to do. So the first tool I started experimenting and working on was a budget estimating tool. It's where you basically upload your tender documents and using AI gives you some estimate for the cost of your project. And experimented with this, I got it to work pretty well, but I couldn't just get past the fact that I don't think for a very long time, people are gonna be fully relying on AI to produce estimates. There's just too much risk involved and no one's gonna sign a contract based on some budget estimate an AI has produced. But really the only value a tool like that I see having is as a way to compare your estimate against the budget estimate to identify gaps. The next tool I started working on was more specifically to solve the shortfalls of Excel for estimating. So basically recreating the estimating spreadsheet that I've used for my consulting and estimating work into some sort of web app which allows people to collaborate and it's much easier to use for complex estimates than building your own complicated Excel workbook. That idea I like and it's where I want to eventually take my software but it was just too hard to implement. It was relatively complex and messy and frankly outside the abilities or outside the scope of what I think an MVP should be at. It was just going to take too much time and effort to build. So the final idea I had and what I eventually built for my MVP was basically an improvement on my original idea. So rather than using AI to build a budget estimate, could you build an AI tool where contractors can upload their estimates to basically error check, check for gaps and help them identify any gaps in their estimates or any scope gaps that could potentially hurt them when they come to deliver the project. I really like this idea because I experimented a little bit and it was simple enough to build quite quickly, although I ended up being completely wrong about how simple it was to build. It solved an important problem, which was underquoting jobs, it takes no additional time or effort to use. You basically upload your estimate and it tells you, do you have any mistakes or not? And it has an obvious ROI. One simple error that gets picked up, potentially save people 10, 20, 50, $100,000. The next decision I had was how to build it. So basically the three options I could have pursued for how to build it. 
I could have fully outsourced doing it. So finding someone on Upwork or Fiverr and paying them to build my software. The other option I had, which was finding a technical co-founder. So partnering with someone to do the development or the third option, which was building it myself. From all my experience in managing subcontractors on construction projects, I was absolutely convinced that considering I didn't know what I was doing with software development, that fully outsourcing it to another person was a recipe for disaster. That recipe for me getting a subpar product and paying a lot more than I should have. The next option was finding a technical co-founder, which was probably the option I most wanted to pursue, but the reality is by the time you start looking for people, messaging people, it was just gonna take way too long. So I am on the lookout for someone to partner with to help me build it, but in terms of getting an MVP up and running, that process was just gonna take way too long, which only left me option C, which was building it myself. The main reason I really loved option C was because it was the best way to actually learn about software development and using AI for construction by experimenting and doing it myself. I figured even if I can't find a technical co-founder, building the MVP myself, going through all the pain of putting it together was going to be a good way to learn the absolute fundamentals of software development. So when I then want to outsource it, future stages, I'm not coming into it completely blind, but a really good understanding of what it takes to build software, how it all fits together, how long different things should take, and how to basically define what you want so you get the best product at the best cost. And then in the background, I could keep slowly looking for a technical co-founder. Well, that was the plan. Originally, I thought putting together something super simple, like just an estimate checker, would take maximum five days. But in the end, it took me almost two months to build. And not like two months of working a couple hours a day, like two months of grinding 12 hours a day, staring at a screen, trying to put it together. So what did I get completely wrong? Rather than just trying to build it, or well, what I did is I dove into building it without building some sort of functioning prototype to understand the technical constraints and then refining the architecture. I sort of built a perfectly functioning prototype, tested it, worked out what worked, what didn't before I dove in to trying to build the whole thing. I just ended up wasting all this time on these iterations where things just didn't work and they didn't work at this fundamental level where I basically had to rebuild the whole thing from scratch. So if I was doing it again, I'd build some really simple prototype that was working perfectly and then I would slowly make it more complicated. I just did it in completely the wrong way. I wasn't using version control. I wasn't tracking what changes I made and it just took so long. Basically, I came across these huge technical problems which I think are relatively big constraints for using something like AI for construction. Basically, what these are is processing huge documents using AI is actually a very challenging task. Prompt design is a lot harder than it actually looks and getting consistent, reliable, structured output from a large language model is also very difficult. But after two months, I'm ready to launch Operum. So here's Operum. AI enhanced estimating and contract management software, the explicit goal to help you never underquote again. So first, when you log in, you get to the project page where you can create new projects for the tenders you're working on. The project page really has two core features. It allows you to analyze the tender documentation you've been sent. So if you've been sent hundreds of pages of scope of works, contracts, technical specifications, you can upload them and it turns them into a concise tender summary. So you can get a quick overview of each tender to give you a better understanding of what you're pricing. Then once you've analyzed the tender, you can also upload the pricing you put together for the project. So the Excel estimate you put together, upload that and run an estimate analysis to basically identify gaps, errors, and omissions in your estimates. It's kind of like spell checker for estimating. As a really quick example, this project was the electrical work for a data center, and I've uploaded the scope of works, the technical specifications, and the contract, which were all up about 70 pages. And then I can click view tender summary once I've analyzed. It takes about 10 minutes to analyze the documentation, really depending on how many documents you put up. It gives you the structured summary of all the documents you've been sent. So it tells you an overview of the project, the duration, the location, the documents, and the information that you've been sent. The overview, so the project covers the design, supply, installation, testing, commissioning of new electrical infrastructure, the key inclusions to your scope, and the key exclusions, such as the building construction works, mechanical works, plumbing, and hydraulic services. 
It also extracts bill of quantities if the client's provided it to you, which you can export to Excel. But if there wasn't a bill of quantities in the tender documents, it'll generate a bill of quantities or derive one from the scope of works. It helps you identify any key contract terms that have been sent. For example, retention, the contract type, payment terms, warranty periods, any schedule information they've given you. So for example, this one, they've given phases with durations, summarizes the technical specs they've provided you and any additional information such as constraints and risks. You can then go back. Once you've analyzed the tender, once you've turned the tender documents into a structured tender summary, you can then prepare your estimate then once you've prepared the estimate in Excel, you can upload any sort of Excel document. Once you upload the estimate, it'll analyze the estimate to identify gaps, errors, and omissions. So for example, this estimate, it's giving you an overview. So the price you prepared was $2.8 million. It's identified $700,000 in gaps, $25,000 in incorrect rates, and $90,000 in calculation errors. And it's given you some recommendations and told you the critical actions you need to fix in your estimate. So. For example, price and include all specified low voltage cables, price and include the data hall power equipment, explicitly price and include the LV distribution board. So it's basically gone through the client requirements, mapped them against your estimate to identify gaps. It's given a little bit more detail on these different gaps and why they're gaps, the requirements. It's also identified any calculation errors. So if there's actually mismatches between your workings and the price you're submitting, it'll help you find those. Then it'll go through every line item to look at what's included, what's excluded, and also analyze the rates of use. So the labor rates, are they reasonable? Are they high? Are they low? Again, it's very general. It's basically to flag any major emissions or things that are obviously wrong. So that's just a brief overview of how the software works, or at least first initial draft. As I said, I wanna add more and more features. So why did I choose the name Operum? Well, for me, when I think of construction done well, I don't know, maybe this is weird, but I think of the Romans. I think systematic, ordered, repetitive, no unexpected chaos or uncertainty. So I really like the idea of tying my software into this organized systematic association I have in my head of how the Romans used to do things. So I started researching what the Roman term for a construction contract was and I actually found out the modern day bill of quantities in Roman times will can tie its way back all the way to the Roman times where you had a construction contract, which was referred to as the, probably not saying this correctly, the locatio conductio operis. And within this, there was an item often referred to as the bill of quantities in modern language, but back then was called the operum of works. Hence the name, the operum. And this idea of an operum was used all the way through the Middle Ages to modern times. In the Middle Ages, when stonemasons used to build cathedrals, they did the exact same thing that we did. They put together a bill of quantities, all the tasks, how much material they're gonna need, how much labor they're gonna need. Hence, I chose the, the name operum. And it kind of reminds me that as much as we're trying to integrate new tools like AI or these special ways of doing things, software, blah, blah, blah. At the end of the day, fundamental process has not changed for 2000 years. We work out what work we have to do, what materials, labor, plant, blah, 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 and then work out how much we think it's going to cost. So Operum, for me, I love the name because it ties it back to it's been doing the same thing over and over in time. And all we're trying to do is enhance it and make it better. What next? I've now sent my software out to a core group of people who are doing some testing on it, giving me some feedback and trying to resolve some persistent bugs. Hopefully in the next week or two, I'm gonna be in a position to launch it. The next steps for me are really to focus, take my focus off the software, focus on YouTube for a bit, making more videos, doing more marketing, then slowly iterate on the software, make it better, solve the problems that people are telling me the software has, work on adding new features, and yeah, basically keep building it. And I'd also like this form of video, I'm sharing my journey and I'm sharing my thinking and how I'm building it. So if you've got any feedback, stuff you think I'm doing wrong, stuff that was dumb about my process for building it, or any features you want added to the software, I'd love to hear your thoughts. So make sure you comment them down below.